Having stable footage is probably the one thing that increased my production quality in terms of video making. And in this video, I'm going to share with you how I do it and which tools I use. Now there are tons of ways to get stable footage with your camera. There are of course a couple free ways and then there are a couple of ways you can spend money on this. To start out with a couple of the free ways you can actually stabilize your footage. One of the first things that comes to mind is that cameras actually have stabilizers built in. So if you have a camera with a stabilized sensor or you have a lens with a stabilizer, you get much smoother footage just by using that. The other thing where the camera is very important is you can use a wider lens. So if you're using a telephoto lens, you're going much closer into the subject and every move you make with the camera is much more significant than using a very wide lens. So for example, if you have GoPro footage that is super wide, it looks much, much smoother just by being super wide and not necessarily because the footage is actually smoother. But if you're using a telephoto lens, then you have problems keeping the footage very nice and smooth. Another way that is pretty much free is actually using your neck strap for your camera. In this case, I am using my GoPro for demonstration purposes, but, what you, but essentially what you do is you take the strap around your neck and you hold the camera out like this, and then it is basically stabilizing the footage because you're having one axis actually like limited in movement. So you give a little bit of pressure on this, and then you can move around like this, or also do a move like this, so that way the footage looks much smoother and you pretty much can do this for very cheap because normally a camera comes with a strap, right? The second thing you can do with this is actually use it with your foot. So you kind of lengthen it out and this might not work in standing, but if you kind of kneel down, you can actually put your foot into this loop. So that way you have a kind of stabilized way and it also limits the movement of the camera in at least one direction and it is much more stable to use it like this. Now of course these are kind of hacks but they are actually very great. Combining that with another tip which is using slow motion, I think it is actually very possible to get amazing shots just by using this strap technique and high frame rates like 60 or 120 frames per second. Using those two together actually enables me to get very smooth shots without using any additional gear which costs a lot of money of course. If there are any bumps left in the footage you can also use post-production to actually stabilize the footage. For example in iMovie you have the stabilize feature and in Premiere Pro you have the warp stabilizer. Both are very good in stabilizing your footage but keep in mind that you might lose a little bit of quality especially if you're using a camera that shoots full HD and your production is also in full HD. This is actually one of the main reasons I use the 2.7K mode on my GoPro because that gives me the ability to actually zoom in a little bit because that way the warp stabilizer actually can zoom in a little bit and I don't lose any quality in a full HD timeline because the 2.7K is still enough to give me the full HD even after stabilization. Now if you actually want to invest in a stabilizer, there are a couple of options, especially depending on the cameras you want to use. Do you want to use your phone? Do you want to use your GoPro? Or do you have something bigger like a Sony a7 or even a 1DX? In the description below I actually have a list that is kind of ordered by price or by category of camera you want to use with the stabilizer. For example you have the DJI Osmo Mobile which is especially good for phones but there's also the CNTech Smooth which is also for phones. The DJI product is probably the better known one. The CNTech is great and I think it is a little bit cheaper as of this recording. I would look at both sides, kind of decide for yourself if you want to go with a product from DJI or if you want to spend a little less and get the CNTech tech smooth. For the GoPro you have two choices again. You have the Karma Grip and you have the CNTech Evolution. I personally used the CNTech Evolution especially for the videos that I made last summer. So I made a video called the offline weekend with the CNTech Evolution and my GoPro Hero 4 and most of the footage was shot in 60 frames per second using that stabilizer and I did a couple others in Tarifa in Spain as well with this setup. After using the CNTech Evolution on the GoPro, I actually wanted to have a similar system for my DSLR or mirrorless system. And at that time I actually switched from Canon to the mirrorless system from Sony, the A7 Mark II. And that gave me the opportunity to also buy a stabilizer for that kind of camera, because those stabilizers oftentimes cannot really handle the bigger cameras. So now I'm actually using the CNTech Crane 3 together with my Sony, and it is great. I really like it. It's lightweight, it works for hours with the batteries, and it actually comes with two packs of batteries, so you have two battery sets. 
It is a great system, it is really small, it's kind of lightweight and I take it with me on hikes and on excursions. I used it for the Nomad Cruise video on this channel, I used it for the Kharabakoa video and I will use this for the future. There is a competitive product from DJI to this which is called the Ronin M but that one is a little more expensive and as far as I know it doesn't pack as light as this one. It is a little bigger, it has a little more tech, a little bit more functionality but in general I prefer a very lightweight solution that is easy to set up and easy to balance and I can use it almost everywhere. Using this gimbal is actually pretty simple. You just put your camera in there, balance it with the weights and there are videos on YouTube you can watch how to do that. And then you can just turn it on and it has a couple different modes which you can learn about. And I put a kind of quick release plate up here so I can actually switch my camera fast and switch between normal tripod, photo making and the stabilizer. Another great thing about this is that you can actually use it like this, but you can also move it around and you can hold it like this very close to the ground and it works great that way as well. Once you grow out of the mirrorless cameras and you want to use bigger cameras, for example the 1DX Mark II, or you want to use a RED camera, there you have two more options, the Freefly system called Movi, and you have the DJI Ronin Mark II, and you have the recently released DJI Ronin Mark II, where both of these products look amazing and I would love to try them and I would love to use them with bigger cameras, but in general, packing a light, I still prefer to use the smaller version and using those bigger systems would actually mean so much more hassle on the back end in terms of data storage, in terms of backpack, in terms of weights and also sometimes you're actually not allowed to use those big systems or those big cameras in locations. So I like to be stealthy with a smaller camera and a smaller system which I can bring almost everywhere. In general using a stabilizer combined with slow motion is a great way to slow down your footage. This handheld stabilizer from CN Tech is great for interview style or walk interview style videos as well. And if you're using a phone to shoot your videos or a GoPro, those stabilizers run around 300 US dollars or 300 euros. And I not only think they are great additions, but if you're starting out and you want to pack light, I think that is an amazing option to just use your phone with a small stabilizer or you buy a GoPro with a Karma grip. It is an amazing stabilizer. It's a great way to have nice footage, but it actually packs very lightly so you don't have to lug around the big camera, the big stabilizer. If you want to make better production videos with better cameras, other lenses and stuff like that, the CN Tech or the Ronin M are both great options to have and I think they increase production value a lot. I hope this video was a great overview in terms of stabilization techniques, not just the bought ones but actually a couple of the free ones as well like the neck strap or the slow motion use. Now please give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you. If you have any questions about the Crane 3 or the Evolution, the GoPro stabilizers or anything like that, please leave them in the comments down below. Subscribe to this channel for more videos like this every day. Check out the playlist about video making and photography I have linked in the description below. And of course all the stabilizers I've been using or the stabilizers I've been looking at are linked in the description below. Most of these links are actually affiliate links and they help me keep this show running and produce more videos like this if you buy something through those links. If you don't feel comfortable with it, please feel free to use the names of the products and just Google them for yourself, Google them on Amazon. And I would also recommend checking eBay in terms of used products because I tend to buy almost all the gear that I use in terms of filmmaking used because then I get high quality stuff for a little cheaper than I would buy it for the new price. Now stay tuned until the next video. I will see you then. Bye.